Most of my radio projects have an Arduino and an SI5351 clock generator used as a VFO and sometimes a BFO as well. I usually combine these two building blocks onto some sort of a board, either a Vera board or Perf board, but often a printed circuit board. This one is in a CW transceiver. There's another one inside this transceiver. It's built on three boards. There's one inside this AM transmitter. SPX has an Arduino Nano and an SI5351 squeezed in. This transceiver has the same pair as well. So does this. It's packed in tight there on two boards. And so does this. A few years back when I got into Arduino programming, particularly with the SI5351, I wrote my own script, so I had complete control over what these controllers were doing. It's 3,300 lines of code, and it's been available on my GitHub page for about three years. Quite a few people have started or forked from it for their own use or experimentation. I've used this one base script in all of my projects. Each time I do, I give a new project a label, and that allows me to compile conditional code for that specific target. So by looking at the labels, I can see that I've used this code in a total of 15 transceivers or transmitters. It's only been in recent months that I've learnt to do CAD PCBs. So it was a pretty obvious idea to come up with a universal VFO controller, do a CAD design for it, and get it professionally fabricated. Working this way means bringing all of the design, component selection and layout choices up front. It's quite a lot of work in front of the screen, but when the box finally arrives, you are rewarded with completely finished high quality boards. Let's have a look at some of the features of this board. The microcontroller is the AT Mega 328 in the 28 pin dual inline package, 16 megahertz crystal. There's a 5 volt regulator there that supplies the microcontroller and the SI5351 breakout board, which sits on a 7 pin header up this end. And then the rest of the headers are for programming through the serial interface, or they are for access to the di digital or analog pins. Plus, there are a number of what I'll call convenience headers, because the usual resistors and capacitors that allow you to multiplex buttons for things like push button sets and paddles are all mounted on the board. So this is 12 volts in on both those pins there. There is room for a two pin header that gives you direct access to the liquid crystal displays backlight should you want to take control of that. There is a resistor there to drop 12 volts as a default backlight power supply. Each of the SI5351's three clocks are bought out to onboard buffers. There are onboard components to filter digitally generated side tone for a CW transmitter or transceiver. This trim pot here sets the CW side tone level, and that's the connection to get access to side tone. The I squared C bus is brought out to an optional header here. And then there are three more headers. This one here is for a set of one, two, or three push buttons for front panel control. This one here is for all of the Kia push buttons and paddle. So you can have one, two, or three 
key a push button memories there. And this one on the end is for the encoder. It includes ground and plus five volt pins in case you have a powered encoder, such as some of the optical encoders. This heading here is for a FTDI serial adapter for programming. This long line of pins here is for the liquid crystal display header. So a header can either be soldered to the top side of the board, in case the board is mounted away from the LCD, or you could mount the header on the bottom side of the board, pins on the liquid crystal display, and just plug them together. There's no compulsion to use a liquid crystal display. You could use an OLED display via the I2C bus, or you could use a liquid crystal display with an I2C backpack off, again, off the I2C connection here. It's really just a cut down Arduino Uno. You don't need to use a display at all. You could use I2C out to sensors or any other devices and just use the digital and the analog I.O. for control. A picture paints a thousand words. So in summary, an SI5351 breakout for the three clocks, an LCD, an optical or mechanical encoder, front panel push buttons for control, a Kia paddle and three memories, side tone, And you still have the option to use I2C to talk to other devices or for an alternative display type. Here's the board paired with its liquid crystal display and the external controls. So a mechanical encoder, three push buttons here that would be mounted on the front panel. So they cycle you up through the bands or the VFOs and the center push button changes the tuning step. There's a second assembly here with a socket for the CW paddle and then three Kia memories. So there's message one, message two, and message three. The actual messages are hard coded in the script. I mentioned earlier that the three clocks are buffered. They produce 2.7 volts peak to peak into 50 ohms, which we see is 20 milliwatts. So for a bit of fun, I connected it up to a 40 meter dipole and heard it in Adelaide. I wish I'd come up with this idea three years ago. It would have saved me a lot of time scratch building all of those handmade PCBs and perf board VFOs. A little module like this could have just dropped into any number of those projects and should prove extremely useful in the future. But even better is the fact that the PCB fabrication services do all the assembly for you and you know that it's going to work when it arrives. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow the progress of this and other projects, please like, hit subscribe. See you next time.